Hey everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Summer of stamping is winding down, but I've still got one more project for you. I'm going to be using the Good Vibes Only Hot Foil stamp today, and I wanted to create a background for it. That was kind of a really cool uh, rainbow background, and I've been working with these colors all summer long, and I love the combination, so I'm just going to roll with it. I'll have the colors listed down below. These are water-based dye inks by Catherine Pooler, and I'm using those blending brushes, and I started with yellow first because I know that's going to be the color that's the easiest to cross-contaminate. So I'm going to start with that one first. And I'm working towards the upper third portion of my uh, quarter sheet of Nina Solar White. So this is 80-pound Nina Solar White I'm working with. And then I came in with my other colors. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some ink blending tips that I shared during a recent YouTube Live with Ellen. And I talked about how I like to hold my brushes out towards the far end. And the reason for this is I love that beautiful soft blend that you get, but I'm often too heavy handed. And I finally figured out um, that these brushes give me the best soft blended effect without harsh lines if I hold out towards the end of the brush. And that way it's just the weight of the brush itself, not the weight of my hand that's applying pressure. And then if I want to, I can grip it closer to the head of the brush if I want to deepen that color or intensify that color. Another thing that I learned um, over the course of using these brushes that um, once I do want to intensify that color, um, I'm going to tap against my work surface here just to make sure I've, I know what I'm working with here. And sometimes I don't need to load the brush from the get-go. I can start off with a light application of that color, especially when it's a dark color like this 2D Fruity, and just test it first against my um, work paper here and then load up if I need to. So it's always a good idea to just check out what you've got on that brush before you start blending because it's a lot easier to add more and intensify than it is to take it away, right? You ask me how I know. <laughs> so now I've cut a piece of this beautiful Aurora foil. It's kind of a silver with a holographic effect. So it's a, I want to say, it doesn't have a pattern to it, but it's got this gorgeous holographic reflective um, element to it that's very rainbow, oil slick kind of um, effect. And I took my piece of foil and it's cut a little bit larger than my hot foil stamp and I anchored it down on the left hand side of my paper first and then I grabbed another piece of washi tape and I pulled it taut. Not super tight so that it was buckling the paper but it's taut against the paper surface and I'm finding that this gives me really great foiling results. And then I took a couple more pieces of tape. Now notice the hot foil stamp does not cross over where those tape, uh, where that the strips of tape have been placed along those outer edges, right? You don't want to cross over the foil there. That's why it's a little bit larger than my hot foil stamp. Now I'm going to prep the platform here. This is the Gemini uh, foil press and I turned on the power button on the right and then the power button there on the control panel which then turned on the lowest heat setting and I set my timer to 15 seconds. I'm going to wait until that light turns green and it beeps at me and then I'm ready to take my project. Now notice I flipped it over so that the hot foil stamp is getting uh, placed directly onto the heating element right? And then I'm going to put my top plate on and wait until um, I hit the start button and then I'm going to wait until it beeps at me and then I'm going to go ahead and take that off the platform and send it through my Gemini uh, die cutting machine. So now I'm going to wait until that's cooled off enough there and I like using those tweezers um, to get a hold of everything because I have sensitive fingers and I'm always afraid I'm going to burn myself. So once it's cool enough to the touch I'm going to go ahead and very carefully remove the washi tape on the other side and I kind of slow the camera down a little bit here so you can watch me working and because um, that foil was held in place there with the washi tape I know I didn't have any shifting of position and once I get it all removed I can peel back the foil and I got a pretty good foiling here and you can see I just had one tiny little spot there that didn't get foiled perfectly but the rest of it is just like wow beautiful job I was so happy and pleased with how that turned out and doesn't that actually reflect the colors there that have been blended onto the paper surface so pretty now I prepped a couple of panels because I wanted to test different things and on my second foiling of the first one I got a really good one the second one I noticed I didn't get quite as um 
full coverage as I wanted. So there's a little bit of sparsity that here and there. Now on the third one, I figured out, and this one, look at that intensity of the ink. That's where I really went deep on the color. But anyway, on the third one, I did everything the same, but I added a shim of 80 pound uh, cardstock that was the same size as this uh, panel here on top of that cutting pad. And you can just anchor it down with a piece of washi tape if you're afraid it's going to move around. Um, but anyway, I found that that gave me the kind of pressure that I really needed. And I did have a slight bit of overfoiling, but because of um, just the fact that it wasn't, you know, the the hot foil stamp itself that was applying the pressure. It just happened to be where it was taped down. It didn't actually foil it into the paper. So I could take that white artisan eraser and just, you know, erase away that overfoiling that occurred. So, I mean, in my opinion, a little bit of overfoiling is better than having some underfoiling. So then I trimmed my panel down. And once I got to this point, I decided I wanted to give it a little bit of a retro vibe. So I took my corner rounder. This is the We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper. And I just rounded those two opposing corners. And then I just popped it up with foam tape onto a standard A2 base card of white. And I thought it turned out fabulous. And use those as a starting point for your hot foil stamping. And I think you'll find um, with just a few slight modifications, maybe, that you might need to make you'll get some good results. So have fun with the hot foil stamping and catch you in the next video.